Christian, we'll start with obviously the big news at the moment. You've confirmed that you'll be leaving the club at the end of the season. Almost a sense of relief now that that news is kind of out in the public and you can just get on with your job about people asking you about it all the time. Yeah, look, there is a little bit. Um, yeah, it was a decision that we made that we we're going to uh, go home a, a little while ago and as a family and it's the right thing for the family and it's the right time for the family as well and um, yeah, obviously I had those conversations with the club and I had those conversations with the players a little while ago but uh, yeah, we had to make sure that you know, from everyone's point of view I suppose that the timing was right and in terms of making an announcement and you know, right from you know, my per point of view uh, right from the team's point of view right from the club's point of view and, and that's that's why it's taken a little while and there is a sense of relief, I suppose, because you know, I've got to sit there and answer questions and uh, almost try and bat those away with, you know, without really giving any answer, and, and that's uh, not comfortable and not what you like to do. So uh, it's certainly relieving to have that out. And um, I, I wouldn't say I'm happy. It's uh, I'm, there's plenty of things to look forward to. Don't get me wrong. I've, I've got a, a great opportunity over in Australia and something to really look forward to there. At the same time, I'm going to really miss here. I'm going to really miss living in England and, and living in St Helens, and uh, especially the club, and especially the people at the club that I get to work with all the time. So it's a little bit bittersweet there. I, I know you're going to want to not make the next few weeks about you as an individual. Having said that, you've got an opportunity to leave this country and leave St Helens. Three seasons, three grand final wins. How much of an achievement would that be if you could do that? Oh look, it'd be something I'd look back on and be extremely proud of and I'll be extremely proud of everything that uh, I've experienced over here and everything that I've been a part of over here and, uh, and obviously that success has been a massive part of that but uh, you know, you're right in what you said at the start, it's, it's not about me, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm a small part of a, a very motivated and, and very uh, special group that um, you know, have achieved everything that they've achieved because they are a special group and you know, I look at blokes like James Roby and all that he's achieved, you know, Johnny Lomax, uh, I could, the list goes on, Alex Wormsley, Morgan Knowles, Jack Wellsby, those kind, Tommy Makinson, those kinds of players that we've got here and the reason that they've had the success that they've had and the reason they've been able to have that continued success is because it's not about any individual, it's not about you know, how uh, James Roby or Johnny Lomax want to play or what they want to do, it's about what suits the team, what's best for the team and you know, Johnny's probably a a real prime example of that this year in that he's, uh, he's changed positions, he's changed how he plays and he's done that for the greater good because we've lost other players that have meant that if he doesn't want to do that then we don't have the success that we can have as a team and that we put ourselves in a position to have as a team and uh, it's a great example of the ethos of the team and, and I'm just a small part of that. You inherited a team from Justin Holbrook that were obviously champions, you inherited a team that had been very well coached and, and well run. How determined are you to kind of do the right thing over the next few weeks to make sure that whoever you hand this on to is picking up a club that continue the, continue the legacy that yourself and Justin have set? Yeah, you're exactly right there. I came to the club and I was in a great position and um, you know, my challenge has always been to leave the club in a better position than what I found it and that's what we've all worked hard to try and do over the last three years and it's certainly been my uh, one of my motivating factors and I'd like to think that that's what I'm going to be able to do and um, you know, if you look at obviously the success that we've had but also you know, the culture that's within the group, the, the hard work ethos that's within the group the number of young guys that we've been able to transition into the squad and the number of uh, re-signings and uh, extensions that we've made this year that I've been a big part of and you know, I know that I'm going to leave the, the roster in a really healthy position and um, you know, the, the squad in a really healthy position and uh, I'd like to think that the culture and the work ethic and all those kinds of things are, are in a really healthy position as well so um, you know, I'd like to think as I said before that I, I have been able to uh, leave the squad or leave the club, sorry, in a, in a slightly better position than what I came in. And, and as I said, it was in a, a really strong position when I arrived. You've got quite a, a fairly unique kind of story and position over the last three years in that this season is probably the first normal season, quote unquote, and of your time here in terms of we went into lockdown six weeks into your first season, second season behind closed doors for lots of it, lots of last minute postponements because of COVID tests and all this kind of thing. Has there almost been an added intensity this year because it's been week in, week out, there's been fans in, you've had less kind of external noise to worry about and every team has been able to just crack on? Um, look, there's been a lot of different challenges this year and you know, a lot of different challenges for different reasons and, and, and that's certainly been you know, the, the number of games we play this year and you know, I guess the normality that's returned there 
um, adds challenges and uh, you know, you've got your fatigue, you've got your injuries, you, you've got those sorts of things. We, we've had a lot more challenges as a club or as a team this year and that's been through injury more than anything else and uh, it's certainly been a bigger challenge this year than what it has the last couple and there's been times where we're, we're, we're quite often naming academy players to make up a 21 and uh, we've had more than a third of our squad at the moment, we've got more than a third of our squad unavailable for yesterday's game so that's been a real challenge. I think every year has had challenges in different ways and you know, the whole COVID, everything that went on with COVID and the break, um, you know, coming back and, and really only having your, your team to support each other and then go home to families and not having any sort of social life and you know, being able to mix in any way, that was a real challenge in 2020. There was different challenges around that and a little bit of normality and the fact that it sort of switched from being half normal to COVID and then back to half normal and yeah, that presented challenges as well, the, the changes all the time and, and not really knowing what we could and couldn't do and, and what was a risk and what wasn't a risk at different times. And As I said, there's been a lot of challenges every year and, and that's part of the game and, and you know, part of what you've got to overcome to have success. And I think part of what's made this group really special and part of what's really made you know, the closeness in the group such a special bond as well and you know, being able to overcome all those things and support each other through all those things as I said, you become really close, and that's that's the playing group, that's the staff, that's the, the closeness between the, the playing group and the staff, and I think we've got a really special group here, and that's come on the back of all those challenges, but also the success that we've been able to build through that as well. You've got a watching brief this weekend, but it, you can be fairly confident, or you'll know for certain, that any of the teams that you might face in that semi-final have got the ability to cause you problems in different ways. Yeah, definitely. It's a, a really strong top six. It, uh, it's what it should be. Um, you, you want finals to be exciting. You want everyone to be in there with a, a chance of winning and a chance of winning each game and obviously getting to uh, a grand final in, in, in only a couple of weeks' time. So it's exciting. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's what the players want to be involved in and what the players play for. And you, know, you start doing all the hard work in November and it's tough you know, coming back to pre-season and uh, being motivated for pre-season, for, for pre sorry, and, and motivated throughout the whole uh, competition in a lot of games. And you, you do all that and put yourself through that to be sitting in this chair and, and have this opportunity that we've got now. And uh, every other team feels the same way. So, um, you know, the fact that it is going to be a, a really competitive top six final series is what excites the players and, and what gets the best out of the players as well. So, you know, we all can't wait. I, just lastly, a, a really strong St Helens contingent in the Dream Team, but I just want to talk about James Roby, his seventh appearance in the Dream Team, now joint second for all-time appearances. He, he signed off for St Helens again for next year, having kind of hinted that he was going to retire. How special has he been to work with over the last three years? Oh, he's been outstanding. Um, as a player, outstanding. He's, he's exceptional. And he's you know, no doubt, well, he's, he's a very, very world-class player and uh, you know, I haven't had the privilege of working with a guy like Cameron Smith. I can only imagine he'd be very similar to, to James Roby you know, and what he can do on the field, the influence he has on the field but also off the field and, and around the place. And you know, Not just the rugby league influence and the way he carries himself and uh, the leadership and the quality that he provides but you know, who he is as a person as well. He's exceptional to work with, he's exceptional to deal with. Uh, I consider him a friend and uh, he's a guy that you know, I'm certainly going to keep contact with you know, when I leave, leave the country as well and, and that's because of who he is as a person as well as what he does on the field. So uh, I can't speak highly enough of him. He deserves every accolade he gets, he deserves uh, every compliment he gets and uh, again that's because of what he does every single week on the field and, and every single week off the field. And I think the biggest compliment I can give him is he's played you know, nearing 520 games and he's played every one of those, I reckon, certainly in my time, exactly the same. And you almost grow to expect that he's just going to do that every single week. And that's a real mark of the player he is. Well, best of luck in the next couple of weeks. Enjoy it. No worries. Thank you.